they can really burst down onto that Caitlyn. Now, Caitlyn's pretty safe, but you better be good at dodging uh, those, uh, those blasts from Urgot, because once he lands that E, you're guaranteed to take a couple hundred damage right there. Those Q's going to home in and pretty much crush your health bar, so good luck with that one. Nice, sporting the Riot Canine. Mm-hmm. A9 Nasus. Don't be sure to pick up and meet any of the Riot members hanging out around IEM. You can get a free Nasus skin, Riot K9 Nasus, as, long, as well as the champion. They both come together. So if you have not checked out some of the Riot employees, they're usually over to the right side of the stage if you're facing the stage. You can grab those cards up. Free skins for everyone. And it uh, looks like we are going to be starting this game following next Peke around a little bit. There's Ocelot in middle. And it looks like they will just go for a regular... Kind of laning phase slash defense of jungle invasion here. Yes, indeed. And we see Pekka uh, milling back and forth, kind of staying in the brush, wants to be safe. But SK looks kind of a I mean, I guess Nocturne's watching top, Warg's watching mid. But, I mean, Kate Turk buddying up could be really scary, actually. So <laughs> they're going to be, they're gonna want to be a little bit careful about how this pans out. CV's going down. They are able to see Ocelot there. Got a little bit of a waylaced. Uh, waylaced. Is that it? Waylaced. Lay waste in, in the Toin cost. And a uh, very nice job there. They're able to get a little bit of damage down and know some vision. So they're, they're not really worried about too much of an invasion. You still have Shushe up top to guard that if they come around the backside of the blue buff. But nothing going down. Almost a minute and 30 here is when your minions are about to spawn. And we are going to get that underway. A minute 55. We will see the buffs come up around the map. And it's going to be underway for all lanes. Shushe most likely going top. He's going to quickly leash for uh, Cyanide there as he gets Wolves first and then moves himself up. Yeah, so Cyanide going to be the Lee Sin jungle for Fnatic. Uh, he definitely been a very big force for their, their wins here in this game. You see a lot of harass coming on here. Shushe helping out his teammate quite a bit. Cyanide going to go ahead and take down, get some nice gold and experience from that. Shushe not going to do much, but kind of watch, make sure no one ganks him. Looks like he's going to be safe. And he's going to throw that Q out and help him get the blue buff as well. So how nice, nice. of Shushe helping out his teammates. Hits once. Barrel goes out. Looking good. And Fnatic also doing the same thing that Cypher did. Or maybe the Cypher same thing Fnatic does. And they're taking those bottom golems for the bottom AD support lane. It's taking a little bit longer. Oh no, it's respawning. They may lose some minion experience on this one. But it's not going to be too much. They'll be able to get back in lane. Just a little bit troublesome there. And it looks like they're going to be against that Tarek Caitlyn. Such a dangerous lane. Yep, they missed out on two minions, but they're going to get this third one here. The gold difference, eight. So, I mean, 16 gold uh, advantage because of that. A little bit of experience as well. Golems are a nice bit of XP, so uh, ultimately uh, an advantage there for Fnatic by doing this. Let's see what else they can do here. Lamia, level one right now, has a Mechie Pendant, so he's really going to want to spam quite a bit here. He's also good at trading uh, fights, by the way, because of that passive. Going to lower the damage output of whatever he hits. Going to be rather powerful here. Like Karthus pushing a little bit up mid here. They're both trading some damage with the poison on Dark Speke. Starting to tip down. Ocelote getting hit by a few lay wastes. We do see that Snoopy is had his wraiths. Looking for Lee Sin. He's going to start creeping down bottom. He does have the blue boss, and this is going to be quite an early level three gank here. He could queue right into that trap. Will he be able to? They're going to go in. They see that trap. They are going to shield the Janna. Can he get his queue up all the way into the turret range? Nif taking a lot of damage. Beautiful Dazzle, but it was just outside of the turret range. Luckily for Cyanide, stays alive and nothing comes from the first gank of the game here at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Lamia made an interesting choice there too. He went shield at level 2. When his shield is up, it makes his attacks and his Q slow the targets he hits. And that means that he was able to go and walk up and try to land these slows onto Nif. Now Nif made a good move as Lee Sin was jumping to him uh, with, um, uh, with the resonating strike there. Um, he actually flashed back to the turret, pulled him in, uh, and uh, then immediately stunned Lee Sin. But uh, Cyanide had walked just out of range in time to not drop down. Uh, he managed to knock that out of that turret there. It was kind of close, and you see Barrels coming out from Shushe, doing a good job of harassing Wicked, getting him a little bit low on health, but he hasn't used a potion yet, so he's probably fine. Ocelot, meanwhile, actually chugged through two potions. Pekka actually hasn't even lost one yet. I'm surprised. Cassiopeia normally seems to win that lane. Um, just in general, she seems to be such a you know strong, highly beloved pick there. But Pekka, there we go, does take that cue to the face right there. Wants to be a little bit careful. Lamy getting harassed a little bit here. Candy Pan, of course, getting a lot of health back thanks to Nif's heals. That shield doing its part as well. Like we do see a little bit of movement from Snoopy here. He's got double buff on. 
coming up on top of Shushe. They may be able to get him here. Shushe has two escape mechanisms. He can do the body slam and then he can flash if he requires. But he's got to make sure that body slam does not hit any units on the way out or is going to stop him right there. And here we go, coming in. He gets the wither down on him. That's going to reduce his damage. He has flashed already. He made sure that flash puts him in front and he may go for the body slam. Actually, he's going to save that. Not even need to yet. use it. No, he yeah, didn't. He You're right. Mana short. And uh, yeah, he somehow managed to live, of course. No stun sneak, but not able to do too much with the lizard buff. And Shuja made it out just barely, but now I think he's learned his lesson to say, hey, I should probably make sure I have mana for body slam because Warwick kind of wants me. And Shuja not learning his lesson. Might get caught out again. Sneepo. Oh, Shushe. There's the wither. Body slam should go off and he will try to get out of range. Will do so, but still taking some damage from Sneepo's red buff. If I were Shushe, I'd really consider recalling and getting some boots because he's not in a wonderful place right now. Yeah, it's not looking good for him. Looks like, again, Cyanide trying to come bottom. He's going to creep with this turret or creep with this minion wave. They just need to get those minions a little bit farther up and it will not work for him. He will be seen going into that bush. Jan is going to steal that trap. Very well played and the knowledge of what's going on in the lane. You can see right there, actually, Melisand standing on a ward from SK so they will not be able to make this gank happen. Melisand taking a lot of damage still in the fights too. Yeah, Melisand was kind of baiting out Candy Panda. He knew that Lamia could win the fight against him, especially with that shield slow on. Landy actually still hasn't ranked E because he's still level 3, actually. Uh, about to hit level 4 off this minion. Should rank E off of that. There it is. Mm, Noxian Corrosive Charge. Getting that damage output. So Shushe, level 5 against Wicked's Nasus. Wicked definitely playing very well here, getting a lot of damage output done. Still have has not used a potion. Shushe has used all three, but he's last hitting pretty successfully. 32... 32, but Wicked now to his turret, ready to spam out and get that Q charged up. And yeah, right now you look at the gold totals, and SK is pretty happy with this, actually. They've got their, their waves a little bit pushed towards them, so they have more minions to choose from, and they're equal on gold, which means they're probably going to build an advantage here. Uh, Wicked staying uh, in the lane as uh, Shushe recalls. He is level 6. He's moving towards mid. I think they're going to go for a, for a dragon attempt. Shusha hit six, they get that Gragas Barrel, they're like, yeah, that's all we need for Dragon, let's do this. Yeah, that's what they're looking for. You can see that SK is pinging a lot in the or in the river right there, and not too much even going on in that area. Maybe they want to place a ward there. We are going to see Snoop ahead towards that direction, and he, in fact, does have a ward. Yes, he is raiding, or warding that Wraith Camp, and it's a very nice job because they know here it's about six, seven minutes that Dragon has spawned, and that, that uh, ward he just placed by Wraiths is really going to help the team to notice if they are moving for that. I think they know that Warwick's here because uh, Urgot's coming into the jungle. He's only level 4, which is a little bit unsafe. Cyanide 5, just barely Warwick moving back out there. But Shusha could find him. He's a little bit afraid of Asa. He's level 7 and, by the way, has not ranked Miasma yet. 2 in Q, 4 in E. I don't know if that's a mistake or if that's just like he really doesn't need that ability yet. But Shusha has taken over mid lane and actually they sent Karthus top. So interesting. Um, I think they really want to use Shusha to sort of just spam out these lanes. Harass a lot, pops his ult down, which means he's going to go take blue. He's going to be happy for him. He's going to let that go over to there, and he's going to be fine here. Now, I'm curious to see what Pekka's build's going to be, because he's not going to get blue this game, because they're going to give it to Shushe. And that means he might go... I mean, he's going Catalyst. It looks like Rod of Ages on Karthus, so he'll be jumping into those fights and being really, really disruptive there. And that might work very, very well for them. You figure, you know, if he can get in the front and sort of take some of the damage, he pulls one towards him, and then they kind of just, like, misposition everyone. They have the Urgot ult, etc., etc. That might be the sort of fanatic strategy, is separate the team. Karthus doesn't really die in 2v5s, and they can clean up from there. That might be the strat, but who knows? Wicked might be too powerful. If he gets pulled in, it might not matter. Warwick the same way. See if that pans out for him. Head back to mid and see what they are doing. Shushe and Ocelot just kind of trading it off. Shushe doing a very good job of keeping all those minions. Bam, right there at like just one tick of health or one ability. Always getting that creep farm, creep farm up. He does have 48 right now. Cass was in mid alone, and it, it was a little bit harder against Nasus up top. So Cass has 70 to the 48, and she does have that catalyst. That sustain and lane for her is very, very good. Shushe, however, can just go ahead and use that ability. Go ahead for Drunken Rage, and he will continue to get his mana back. Yeah, and inter interesting to see, by the way, on builds, because I'm always curious to see what they are. Uh, so Shushe not going Dorn's Rings as he normally has because he was given blue buff early and didn't need the extra mana regen. Unfortunately, though, his barrels aren't doing quite enough damage, and he's getting very close to like losing those minions uh, to, uh, to damage uh, from his minions. Th those barrels drop the, uh, the ranged ones to like 10 health. He doesn't quite last hit them, and that uh, could be very dangerous to miss out on three minions every wave uh, just by, by being a little bit greedy. 
But the gold actually, yep, in SK's favor there. Basically just outlasting at this point. You see they are two, 300 gold ahead. Their mechanics are just better in lane, and that is why they are ahead in this game right now. So far, bottom lane has not really res uh, given any rewards to Fnatic. You would have thought, you know, Urgot Janna very uh, able to be aggressive, but Lambia, of course, now with Tier of the Goddess, would be happy to spam that up and get a lot of charges back. What SK does here is they continue to push back to their turret, kind of hanging out. Yep, Pekka lives. There was an almost gank by Snoopa. He was level 6, but the Wall of Pain was enough to get Karthus out there. But he's got to be a little bit afraid. He's only got that Catalyst. 1200 health can get melted uh, by Nasus and Warwick. They have a lot of percentage health damage, so having HP without resists, not really a big resist, uh, not really a big defense there. Ocelot disappearing from lane as soon as he... <laughs> oh, very nice job, Mi Miasma, down in the path that he Shushay would have taken, but he just body slams through the wall able to get himself those wraiths so he's always getting himself experience as four more uh, creep experience than you know cast is getting ocelot has however been in lane a little bit longer though level nine to level nine as Yushe has caught up and uh let's see if ocelot lets this lane push a little bit nice job it's exactly what they wanted from Shushe. they want him to clear these minions out you can see there's no last hits coming from ocelot because they want Shushe to come out but it looks like snoopy will give up on that attack a little bit of a chase down here up top karth is not really taking any damage Looks like Wicked will be expending his mana here and will most likely back after this wave. Yeah, do you have Philo Stone yet? He does not. This is, yeah, it's a very likely recall uh, soon from him. If you can't farm the Q anymore, there's almost no point in staying around for that long. It's up to 135. It's pretty good there. Pekka still pushing out the, the ranged minions. Pretty smart move from him. Gets a free goal out of that. Forces the wave to get pushed. Does last hit pretty successfully. And he may choose to recall. He's run back pretty far. Nope, sitting still, letting Wicked last hit. Oh, nice attacks by Candy Panda. Bottom lane, Cyanide forced to shield up onto Lamia. Lamia took a good hit there from a Piltover Peacemaker, Caitlyn's Q. And it looks like they're going to lay down some traps, and it looks like they will go for the first dragon of the game a little later than we've been seeing here a minute. 11 minutes and 30 seconds in. Usually it's about 8 minutes. So we're going to see if this is the first team fight that we have. Shushe has just popped Drunken Rage, throws in a barrel, looks to let that one sit. They are trying not to do too much damage to Dragon because they don't want to let that blow up. Lee Sin comes out it. and they actually stole Dragon from SK. They are able to take him out, but that is an easy, easy trade. You don't even have to think about that twice. One death for Dragon is a good for, good for it. Yeah, that was excellent right there. That <laughs> just, just very, very good coordination. Puts the barrel out, knows how long it's going to last. Is Okay, you ready? Q. And smite will in the air. And that was just <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent work from Cyanide. He did smite that in time. Snoop is smite now on cooldown as he used that to take down a wolf camp. Unfortunate for Snoop, of course, that was a giant risk because if he didn't smite in time, it was, well, you didn't take Dragon and you gave up first blood. So uh, definitely uh, some confidence there from Cyanide. Meanwhile, Wicked is like, so you're ha you have all those antics going on. I'm going to farm my Q. I'm up to 50 so far. That ain't bad at all. But he's not, he's not building that cooldown reduction build that we saw um, from Skyart. So he's actually rushing Trinity Force, which is a very different style here because, uh, you know, I'm not sure which one's better necessarily, but I'm kind of feeling like, well, he was building max CDRs so that he could Q every minion for sure. You're just kind of relying on Trinity Force damage to be useful early on, but you're not building for super, super late because that early Trinity means your Q is going to hit hard soon, but you don't have the cooldowns for the constant ultimates, the constant withers. I don't know, I kind of like Skyrim's build more. It makes a lot of sense. It's, it, it reeks of a player who is an expert in that champion. Yeah. But Shushe going to be given blue buff pretty easily. 11 health left, picks that one. Level 10 on him. We see Ocelot, 10 and a half. Pretty much equal EXP there. Shushe, they're rushing for the death cap. Says, I don't need Dorn Rings, I have blue buff. Death cap it is. Not going to find Wicked in the back. Has the ward. We'll probably spot him. So yeah, he knows where he is. Ooh, Lamia taking a good amount of burst, almost taken down by Kaelin. Can she get the ulti off? Flash is in to get the kill under the turret. Melisand taking a little bit of damage there. No dazzle even required. They got the dazzle a little early, but Candy Panda really facilitating the kill for himself there. Excellent job there. Terra Kaelin, kind of a legendary lane in terms of being so strong as bullies. And uh, we'll see if, uh, which one scales better. Again, we keep, you know, we keep having the EU players say, well, yeah, you know, she wins lane, but so what? And, uh, oh, wow, the flash in coming out of Melisan. A uh, little bit of defense there and ults them back. Kate's not in a happy place. Ulted back and Melisan's still alive. What the heck? She's still alive. Nif uh, trying to chase in, getting slowed and Lee Sin. Oh, wow. With lizard buff. Are you Here comes Ocelot serious? Snoop, eh? Oh, man. And the ult comes in from Karthus. That's going to be enough to kill him. Cyanide's not in good shape. Melisan's I would run back to the turret alive. if I were him. I think he should go back to the turret, or maybe he might be able to W. Oh, he's been ulted. Melisan, turn around. W to the teammate. He swaps Snoopa into the lineup, but it's not enough. And this looks bad for Lamia now. 
He's coming in there. Pekka is nearby. He's going to come in, try to pick these up. Also could go down. Pekka getting the damage up, but will pick up wow. that one. They've traded back and forth. Now can they chase Snoopa? The red buff is slowing him a little bit, but <laughs> Melison is giving him free oh, movement minions. speed. That E is letting him run away. That blood scent letting him get out. Melison runs away finally. But uh, ultimately, that was a trade of uh, actually pretty good because it was 2-0 for SK on the first kill, and now it's 3-4. So they went 3-3. If you count that entire lineup, uh, if you count the Urgot dying to Caitlyn early on, Excellent by Fnatic kind of took that kill and said, well, we're going to go 3-2 afterwards. Uh, but meanwhile, Wicked still farming top. <laughs> Doing what a Nasus does best, farming that Q up. If you don't know much about Nasus, he is going to gain attack damage or power to his Q every time he gets a minion with it, kind of like Vagar gains AP. And that's going to be huge for his team end game. We saw able to take down Hot Shots Cho'Gath, which many failed to do. So that's definitely something to be reckoned with. Uh, now in the hands of Wicked, we'll have to see what he can do with it. Yep, Shuja has enough for a death cap now. Got that about 15 minutes. Pretty strong play to do so. Uh, just on minion kills, I mean, his team, his team did get a dragon and a turret for him, so that helps obviously quite a bit. But he's last hitting that almost entirely on his own uh, merits there. to kill off that minion. And if I were him, I would recall and pick up a death cap just because it's so important. But, hi Wicked, you've been jumped into a wall of pain. Uh, good luck with this one. And a wall of pain is a metaphor for how much damage the team deals. And also the spell itself. Wicked down to half health. Barrel does hit him in the face. He's getting lower. Honestly, they could keep pushing. Shusha has low cooldowns. Barrel comes out again. Will not tag Wicked. Becky, of course, wearing double buff thanks to the kill on Cassiopeia. Yeah, this should be a definite dive on Wicked. He does have his ultimate up, but it wouldn't keep him alive for that much longer. If they hit that one, they were definitely going in, but it looks like a good dodge, and Snoopy finally comes up here. Give a little bit of support to Wicked. The two-on-two on, two on, two on the turret is going to be in their favor. I'm surprised there's no Wall of Pain. They could they could do a lot of funny things with that. Bottom uh, with the chase it. down uh -oh, here. They do no, get a Zephyr. Ocelot's coming in, though, too. Peck is not in good shape with this one. Getting a lot of slows here. Looks like he will maybe live. Yeah, they will not. Actually, uh, yeah, they will be okay Bottom here. lane getting hit. Nif goes down to Lee Sin. Both lanes going for a full-on fight. Not really like we could actually follow both, but that bottom one did come up with the first kill as the top was able to escape. It was a very nice job. The quick Zephyr out. They were able to stop Nif from running, and then we saw Cyanide just quickly get in there with his Q. Rocket again for the damage. Yep, sorry for stealing your fight. Mine didn't even turn into a kill, so now I just feel <laughs> bad. Cutting off Riv for a non-kill. It's like, hey, so hold on, let's talk about these minions real quick. Meanwhile, battles at the top. Fnatic X Pika going down rather quickly to Wicked and Snoopa. Now, can he tag Wicked? One Q goes off. Ult goes off, I think, a bit early. Will not pick up the kill there. While a pain goes off, for what that's worth. And he's going to time out on that passive. Lee Sin going to go back towards the bottom. Four to five, still the kill score. Kills being traded back and forth between these teams. 700 gold differentiates. That's pretty much entirely just from that one turret kill that's been done in mid. That is the entire gold advantage. The kill is otherwise equivalent, pretty much. One dragon on SK's, uh, not SK's favor. Sorry, it was stolen by Fnatic. Like they will be able to go ahead and just take this turret down. He does have quite a big minion wave, and the minion wave that's supposed to uh, contest this isn't close, but I guess without the vision on the map, they're going to back off. Snoopy does not want anything to do with that turret, and they are all starting to focus down towards bottom. That first dragon, I believe, was taken about 11 minutes, so we'll see that at 18-something, and that's about the time right now, and here we go. Movement from both teams. The dragon has popped, and we are going to have a force fight. Yep, Fnatic are in first. Warwick and Nasus are far. Karthus is far as well, but it's down a half health right away. And can they get enough damage out of it? Because Tarek, Caitlyn, and Cassiopeia are close by. Fnatic will pick that one up. Now they've caught Ocelot. Oh, but a bad ult from Gragas. Exhaust comes off from X Pika, but that might not be enough. Nif getting caught now. Barrel's coming out. A lot of damage out, but that will be a kill. Nice to Pekka. And that is assist from all four members of the team. In addition to that kill from the fifth. So uh, Fnatic nice now very happy. In that. Yeah, absolutely great. They got a kill on the support. I don't think he was wearing an Oracles yet, but of course the Dragon is quite nice. They've taken two now, which means their support is much more farmed. 2,800 gold on the Taric, 3,600 gold on the Janna, so she's much happier in this game. Warwick continuing to farm the jungle. We do see that Lee Sin is pushing bottom lane with his team. Cyanide helping to push this turret. Even more gold, picking up almost, uh, that's about 150, 190, 240 gold, 340 gold in the past. You know, two few minutes is very nice for the entire team to have, especially if you're around Dragon, you grab the experience as well. So these guys really have a good jump on that. 26,000 gold to 23,000. Hold on real quick, though. Snoopa Wicked jumping out of Pekka. Puts the Wall of Pain down, but still getting completely owned right there and does drop down the Nasus ultimate. Those Qs are hitting really, really hard. He's hitting for plus 216. The Sheen adding about 80 on top of that. And he is just destroying, thanks to the Warwick ultimate, just blowing him up over the course of four seconds. 
And poor Pekka just kind of giving away buffs at this point. It's all about the Riot Canine. It's all about the Riot Canine Nasus. <laughs> Don't and the Earth Rider Warwick. Or, well, yep. Well, Earth. Kind of. Instant. Er, Earth Wearer Warwick. Wearer. Oh, wow. Thanks. Bottom lane. Looks like Candy Panda kind of out of mana, but they're not going to go back on this. I'm going to check his gold and see what he has in his pocket here. He does have 1,700. That's an easy BF sword for him, but he already has one, so he'll possibly go for that fast Infinity Edge, maybe for some attack speed. Very nice Zephyr to slow him down. They're waiting for Urgot to get in. A very nice ultimate pushes Candy Panda on the other side, but way too much burst damage on the front end. Can he be switched in? Oh, I thought he was going to back up just a little bit and do a switcheroo oh, with Candy Panda enough. on the turret. Yeah, Ocelot came by to defend as well. Panda will survive this one. A nice aggression there. Does pick up that Jana kill. Excellent play on that one. And Wicked, of course, still farming top. Getting that Q stacked up. 234. Gragas coming back. Gonna do some nice barrel work. Nice job. Only missed one uh, minion out of that entire wave. Not too bad. He should have missed zero, though. Hmm. You hold him to too high regards. No. <laughs> he should be perfect. Peke looking to back off a little bit here. He doesn't even know that Snoop is there, but it looks like whatever decision is making him go down. Yeah, he's going to go grab and grab the mid. We saw Shushe, or we grab the Wraith. We saw Shushe doing this as well. There's no minion wave there. Why not every time you can? Get four creeps up, and it comes out. The ultimate out of the hands of Cassiopeia. It's going to be Petrifying Gaze to shut down X Peke, but there is Melisan, the support doing just that, and they are going to be able to get out alive. They're trying to cut off Urgot here. They're going to go close this gap in. They don't see him in the jungle. Very nice CV, and he will not be able to lock down any kind of suppression on that. Warwick has a very nice range, able to do an on-point uh, suppression, and that's exactly what they were trying to do right there. Dazzle on the end it would come up. They would have had a very nice fight. But in the meantime, Cyanide had ganked top, and uh, seems Shushay is better equipped to fight Nasus than Karthus is. He managed to pick that one up quite successfully. 6-7 to seven the score, uh, and of course SK is still quite far ahead as they have the Dragon and turret advantage, but now there is no one to stop this bottom lane push. SK going to pick this one up for strong and probably keep going. The Terra Gold may be a bit of a waste there. I would save it for the next fight. It could happen in under a minute. We see them pings at that red buff. They do want to be pushing onto that. They have a ward there. They know what SK is up to. They could catch them here. Oh, oh, four there. members in on that push. Can X Pekka get in there in time? He's going to turn on Defile here. He does hit him with the wall, but that's only going to slow him. Will they even try to initiate off of it? The wall really just a deterrent and blowing a cooldown there. Didn't need to use it. They will back off, and it looks like, you know, SK stealing a buff. Very nice there, denying the resources for Fnatic. And they're going to head back to lane. Yeah, this is very happy for SK. Oh, oh, oh. Not going to get caught. They're not going to... Actually, yeah, he's going to go left. They're not going to chase through on that one. Looks like Fnatic are safe for now, but... They're down one kill. They've lost one turret, and they could get pushed down in mid as well. Red buff Caitlyn is scary. See what they can do. Gragas ult can get them a free win if they want. Pekka takes a lot of damage here, gets a nice ult off, but only hits minions. A good flash from Asa will keep him alive. Two hundred seconds of that cooldown now. Has to wait a little while for that. Sinai getting some damage up and onto these monsters. Wraiths go down. And he's going for a Warmog's next. He's got the health from it. Does not have the rest of the recipe. See what happens here. Pekka and Shushe milling back and forth. Take some minions down. Body Slam comes in as well. And Shushe going to wear the blue elixir for probably the rest of this game. Going to keep chugging through those. We'll see what the next item is. Right now he's got a death cap and an amplifying tome. We'll see what he tries to pick up now. 0, zero and 2. 1,600 gold being worn as well. So he can take any kind of major item pretty soon. Doing very nice actually seeing what Caitlyn did buy with that 1700 gold she had. Now up to 1000 again, doing very nice farming up on the team for Candy Panda. Usually one of these players we will see doing a great job on the farm. However, Cassiopeia, that's going to be Ocelot ahead of him, as well as Shushe and Axpeke in the middle as well, doing very nice farming. But she has grabbed herself that Bloodthirster and a little bit of speed to stay in lane. And that's going to be against that Urgot who went uh, obviously for that Mana Mune. And that BF Sword is going to start doing a lot of damage. And like we said, Fnatic has a team to displace SK right out of wherever they are with just about five of their skills. Yep. Blue turret does go down. Nasus does push that one successfully. Grats there to Wicked making that happen. Should be able to recall for a Trinity Force now. Actually, yeah, he does have enough for it. See if he goes for that indeed. Shushe is still clearing out minions. Definitely farms quite well and scales well into the late game. Has a thousand gold in hand, so that could be a Void Staff if he wants it. They're revealing Dragon, and that's already up. He actually had a Q in the air as it respawned. Nice job, Lamia. And an immediate Dragon kill by Fnatic. That goes down without any delay whatsoever. 
build themselves a 2.3 thousand gold lead. But Lamia, be careful. Panda's found you. They don't want to be split up here. Well, Pain goes off and they found Stuba. Barrels go out. They could ult. And Stuba goes right into Lamia's face. Ult comes off on a Shusha. He's going to take a lot of damage here from Caitlyn. Leeson going to try to help that one out. A swap goes off on a Kate. And Kate's not going to be happy with that one. Whoa. Drops down rather quickly. Karthus goes down. Niv and Wicked going to take some pain there. Ocelot barely making it out with 150 health. But, uh, you know, Fnatic won that battle. One death to two. And they're ready to push because they have two full health champions yeah. ready to shove mid. <laughs> I honestly thought when Urgot made the switch, he was just going to allow uh, Caitlyn to take down Shushe, no. but he got pushed out once more, and that's the displacement of the team doing a very nice job of not even allowing them to stay in the spot they're in. And that's exactly what the AD, AD carry needs to do. Candy Panda has to have full control over his movement, stepping between every shot that he takes, and understanding that he's always in a position to escape or kite the enemy team. It's exactly what Fnatic can stop right now, and that fight went very well in their favor. Four turrets to two. Great job by Fnatic. Let's, look, let's make a rundown of the comparisons between the champions. So Cassiopeia, 218 minions, 2-1-2. Two, and two, uh, Versus the Gragas of Fnatic, 1-0-3, 213 minions. They're at about the same spot. They're both playing very, very well. Similar scores. Okay, great. Urgot, 1-2-4 versus 3-2-0. Again, pretty similar there. Two deaths. Uh, part of five kills versus part of three. Caitlyn, 199 to the uh, 160 of Urgot, actually. I got a little, a little bit to Caitlyn there. I think she's she's outplaying the lead a little bit. And we have said that Candy Panda is such a treasured member for SK. Um, but, you know, people have said that, you know, Caitlyn's good early game. Falls off late, so maybe it's going to be more and more time for Lamia to shine. And maybe that'll be all right for them. Supports 0-1-7 oh, Janna. 18 minions. Ooh, versus 9 minions on Taric. 0-3-5. A lot more deaths on Taric, of course. When your team has equal kills and you have more deaths and less assists, you're just not playing to that same standard, I think. And... Uh, I gotta hand it to uh, Melisande for outplaying as a support. Going to the rest of the lanes, we have that Karthus. 210 minions, has the Cleanse Sash, and they're gonna find Nif right away. Nif, you are so incredibly dead. Goodbye, drop down from a kind of across the map. Locked up to a ward and got swapped. Excellent there by Lamia, kind of enabling that kill, and now Wicked. Um, good luck, I guess. He's wow. gonna try to get away from this. A lot of damage from that Gragas Barrel. They are gonna go in. Flashes have been expended. They are gonna take down Wicked. Huge damage on Suche. Shushe also falls by the hands of Cass. Ocelot trying to get out of this one alive, but he's just getting attacked. Lamia doing a very nice job, keeping himself shielded up. Great job by Melisan, keeping Lamia alive by just a sliver of health, coming out with four kills to a loss of two. Wow, they got so much burst damage there. Of course, the Tarek was free. The Nasus got caught by a bunch of knockups all at once. Uh, the Jonathan Fernando was part of that as well. Just died immediately. The, the, the uh, just burst damage from Ocelot was so incredibly massive. Basically one shot of Shushe and Pekka flashed in and then immediately died as well. So Ocelot, very, very scary. And next fight, if they can actually keep him safe for once, they'll do really, really well. Sina getting pushed around a bit. Ult out from Nif as well, not doing quite enough damage there. I'm gonna see Caitlyn on the prowl slightly. See what happens from that. Throwing Qs off into brushes. Wants to know where the enemy team is. Looks like they're nowhere. They're not gonna make their way out. However, SK are a Baron threat. This Fnatic are uh, recalling and healing right now. Cassiopeia does about, uh, probably actually better than Karthus does at killing Baron. They have uh, that Warwick in there as well with the Riggle's Lantern. It's going to be extremely useful. Um, Tarek, of course, buffs his team. Caitlyn, really good PvE damage with that headshot. And Nasus, of course, Nasus, that Q spam, that ultimate doing percentage health, which always deals health in percentages, Rivington. Yes. And uh, I learned that damage. from you. Percentage damage will always deal damage in percentages. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. I was unaware of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Couple love, of claps. love the clapping. <laughs> awesome. So looks like Fnatic gathering here in middle somewhat. Looks like Lee Sin will grab the red buff. That would be nice for him. He'll be able to slow on his attacks as well as add the slow from having shield on. Shushe being a man and just bodyguarding that one for Xpeke in mid. It's a very nice cooldown for Caitlyn. So Candy Panda, you know, using her ultimate kind of just like that is going to get it back quite quickly. And that's just, you know, doing extra damage and continuing that poke game as much as they can poke. It's going to make wow. this easier. Wow, Candy Panda taking 75% of her health. They are going to initiate onto this. Xpeke getting dropped quite hard. But that's all right for Karthus to be in the fight. Now in zombie mode, can cast spells for another eight seconds. Going for the ulti, he cannot be stopped. And he drops one, gets an assist on another as one kill is traded. Xpeke finally falls. Ocelot getting knocked down on by Cyanide. He will pick up that kill. Nif and Candy Panda both at 300 HP almost. Can he roll out the right barrel? He misses that one. He may still have enough time here. He's got the blue buff and the body slammed down. On, wow, on to Nif. What range? I thought he was just out, but that's a belly on Gragas. 
I have to really hand it to uh, to this cast, uh, the Karthus play right here. That was phenomenal. He <laughs> walked in. He knew he'd get ulted first by uh, Warwick. Cleansed it out. Went forward. Stayed alive. Died. Well, uh, actually, he didn't die because I got Zonia's. And <laughs> just was such a giant threat. Burned the Warwick ult. Burned their focus. Zonia's down for two more seconds. And then finally did die. Popped the ult. Picked up another two kills for his team. His team got Baron. Did Pekka get the Baron? He did. So all the Fnatic wearing Baron buff. Up five kills. Oh, wow. Up eight thousand gold sk are not happy about this yeah doing such a nice job right now fanatic controlling the entire map it, they've only lost their outer turrets but have managed to push down top lane to inhibitor turret and mid lane to inhibitor the only thing they really haven't been able to get to is that bottom second defensive turret and i'm sure it won't be too long they don't really have the split push team we were talking about before you're going to kind of need all those people in the fight since you are relying on the ability for them d d to displace their opponent with the abilities. We've seen this. Melisand can ulti. That's the Monsoon that heals the entire team. Cyanide can absolutely kick everybody on the team. And if he kicks the right person and it hits the rest of the opponents, they'll stun them up into the air. Shushe can throw his barrels. There's just so many options they have to initiate from the beginning. So anybody can be there to start it for them. Absolutely true. And we're going to see SK try to regroup here. They have a good chance of coming back. I mean, 8,000 gold is kind of a lot, but they do have the chance of getting this one. Uh, blue buff steal from Shushe, and again, the Dragon Fanatic has been perfect about these. Even when SK took the position and, and went for it, Fnatic still took every Dragon. Good advantage to have Cyanide barely making that what happened for his team. They're going for it. They're going for a mid push. This is actually very good for them. They're going to do a nice job still giving Shushe that blue. And as you said, still pumping those blue elixirs. You can see the aura glowing around them. The wall of pain goes down from Karthus. That will stop them from staying in front of the turret. But they don't have any minions. So they're, they're all kind of just tanking the turret. And they're all right with it. Yeah, they have really good AoE. Uh, just area denial with candy pandas. Uh, just an instant trap goes down. PK's like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and tank that real quick. Because we don't want those in a fight. Uh, Urgot doing some good spam as well. But yeah, you look at just how quickly those minion waves melt. And Pekka actually... Getting a little bit too low. Oh my gosh, almost takes down Candy Panda. Nice try by Shushe. And they're going to go back in. The O goes off. And he's going to walk towards Tarek. It's not going to be enough. They take him down. Warwick again getting pushed around. Nice ult by Janna. Lamia recalls back. And there is Pekka in the middle. But oh, Zonia's wow. one, two, three down so far. Warwick and K uh, Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia falls. And Pekka's actually alive right now. Warwick getting chased out. Lamia's still going to press on. <laughs> oh, he's got to oh, get him! Oh, wow. Yeah, he dies for it, but uh, I think it's okay. Absolutely amazing. The perseverance right now of Fnatic, understanding what each of their champions can do and under what pressure. And <laughs> there it is. Lamia says worth it in chat, and they are going to be able to take <laughs> this first game and under their belt. Very nice job by Fnatic showing complete control in our grand final match. The first game to them. SK still in this one. So they may be able to bring it back two matches. <laughs> and prove that the worth it concept works. Even in tournaments, Pekka goes down to the turret. Um, does get slayed there. But Fnatic, an excellent game one so far.